no exaggeration to state that one of the most significant improvements in image processing tools is RC Astro's Blur Exterminator. This is a plugin that will only work with PixInsight, so it does mean purchasing the full version of PixInsight as well as the plugin. The use of this tool provides incredible image deconvolution, which helps to smooth out the blurring effects of atmospheric seeing and can certainly correct misshapen stars. Now, Affinity Photo doesn't have any image deconvolution tools, but it does have some very useful image sharpening capabilities. So in this video, I'd like to introduce some of these to you because they allow us to simulate image convolution quite successfully. The three tools that we will look at are found under the filters menu. Here we can find unsharp mask, the clarity tool and the high pass filter. We'll look at these individually and see how useful they are for image sharpening. Of course, they won't carry out the actual deconvolution, but they do provide very useful sharpening capabilities. Let's start off with an amazing luminance image taken of the Galaxy NGC 5128 in Centaurus, which consists of 151 300 second sub exposures taken with the Chile 1 24 inch plane wave telescope. This unique object is the result of a collision between two or possibly three galaxies. Before looking at the sharpening filters, I'm going to apply the RC Astro plugin Star Exterminator. This plugin can be applied directly within Affinity Photo, so we don't need to use PixInsight. By using this, we remove the stars from the image and when we apply the sharpening filters, they won't affect the stars. Under the filters menu, scroll down to plugins and then across to RC Astro and finally to Star Exterminator. The menu is very simple. We click on OK to start the procedure. Now we can see an amazing view of the galaxy with the stars removed. At this point we don't have a separate star layer so we must carry out a short procedure to get that. Ensure that the history and layer menus are visible on screen. Copy the image to the clipboard, I'll use Control C and then on the history menu step back to the previous state. Now paste the image from the clipboard onto the original image using Control V. Doing this will create a two layer image. In the layers menu, come up to the blending drop list and select difference. This creates our star layer, but we need to flatten this down to a single layer before proceeding. You can do this by clicking on documents and then flatten. Copy this star layer into the clipboard and then on the history menu click on the first of the new states labelled paste. Now use Control V to paste the star layer onto the starless image. Finally go up to the blending list again and change this to add. Doing so creates a three layer image with the stars, the starless layer and the original layer which we can now delete. Let's label the two layers. Click in them and label them stars and starless. Hide the stars layer. Now we can proceed with the stars temporarily removed from the image. I'll also remove the history menu from the screen. Under the filter menu, we can scroll down to sharpen and come across to Unsharp Mask. This brings up a small menu with three sliders labelled Radius, Factor and Threshold. We'll leave the Threshold slider on zero and drag the Factor slider to a value of around two. 
Next, we'll apply sharpening using the radius slider and for our image, use a value of around about five. Affinity Photo has a very useful option where we can view the before and after effect of the sharpening filter by clicking on the small button in the middle at the bottom left. Clicking on this splits the image in two showing the applied effect on the left and the original image on the right. We can also drag the vertical bar to the left or the right revealing or hiding more of the sharpened image. This makes it very easy to compare the before and after application of the sharpening filter. The unsharp mask routine has worked very well and in a way appears quite similar to image deconvolution. We can click on the cancel button to revert the image to its original state. If we wish to apply unsharp masking at this stage, we just click on the apply button. Let's now experiment with the high pass filter. First, we must create a duplicate layer of our starless image by right clicking and selecting duplicate. Click on the middle layer to select it and then from the filters menu, select sharpen and then high pass. This will bring up a single radius slider in the menu and we can experiment with different values. Lower values of around 9 pixels seems to select the fine detail in the galaxy, whereas larger numbers appear to select larger scale detail in the image. We'll use a value of around 9 pixels and then click on Apply. Under the Blending list, select Overlay and the High Pass filter will be applied to the base starless image. Clicking on the center high pass layer, we can hide the effect to check the before and after results. I recommend that you experiment with the high pass filter for the best results on your own images. Continuing, I'll delete the high pass layer to revert the image back to the original starless state once again. We can now examine the third sharpening tool which is located under filters sharpen and then clarity. Once again, there is just a single slider running from minus 100% to plus 100%. Try experimenting with the positive values and see how the clarity tool boosts low contrast details in the image. Once again, as before, clicking on the central button at bottom left allows us to see the before and after results. To conclude, I'll apply the unsharp mask filter as before and then apply the clarity filter to bring out the low contrast detail. You can see that by combining both tools we can end up with a very interesting result. Note the improved visibility of the jet apparently emanating from the nucleus of the galaxies and the more prominent visibility of the star shells ejected during the collision of the two galaxies.